What is up guys, Megazard here, and I am back, and today it is the PU Open Round 2. I'm already versus a, a notable PU main, very good player, Cryolot. Huge hype series. Um, before I get into that, just an explanation of what I've been doing. I didn't... I've been really busy with Slam stuff. School started, I'm applying to colleges, and that is a lot. Like, I have a lot on my plate right now, and I didn't want to throw out filler content that'd be kind of shitty. Um, just so that I have things on my channel. Like, there's no point in doing that. It hasn't been that long, but I thought it would be the point. I would just make the point that I'm not going to upload bad shit because I want to show people that I'm alive. But this, this is anything but bad. This series was nuts. I haven't had a m series more intense than this. I don't actually think I've ever had a series more intense than this. It was crazy. So, game one. I have this Huntail team that I worked on with Raw Melon for Team Building Shop. Um, Huntail is a cool mod I've been screwing around with. I really didn't like it. And I tried a couple of times with Team Building Shop earlier, and I couldn't get Huntail to work. I just couldn't. It just wouldn't do anything. And then I went back to it, I worked on it, then Romelin helped me out, gave me some advice. Gotta give him shoutouts, because uh, he really did help me with getting my head around Huntail. And since then, I've really come to like it and respect the Mon and why it's in B+. And hell, I'm the one who put it up there in the first place, but um, couldn't really handle Huntail, and now I think it's quite good. Um, so it's a Life Orb Smash Huntail is what the team is built around. Uh, Grumpig, Source Ants Monferno, Tank Golem, Life Orb Zebstraka, Scarf Leafeon. Very basic, standard-ass balance. That's all I wanted to do. Because uh, I did look at replays a little bit. Uh, not too much. I didn't, I didn't go in that hard, but I did see that uh, Cry had a lot of like offensive balance teams, like balance with strong wall breakers like Ban Staland or Ban Leafeon and a sweeper. And I thought if I could bring my own balance similar to that, but a Smash Huntail plus Monferno Core, it would do pretty well. Unfortunately, he brings Hyper Offense, what looks to be Webb's Hyper Offense with Smeargle, and I'm not entirely prepared for that. Um, just because I have no removal, all my mons are affected by webs, and that is a pretty significant problem. And I, I can't stop him from setting that. So going into this game, I was definitely a bit discouraged early on, because the webs matchup kind of sucks. Cacturn also terribly annoying no matter what you have, how you're playing against it. I have a Monferno. That doesn't mean Cacturn isn't just a really annoying, because that is my thing for Cacturn. If Monferno goes down, it's going to be really hard to take care of it. Uh, but on my side, Huntail can put in work if I can weaken Cacturn uh, to the point where Sucker takes it out. And as long as I'm healthy enough so that Monferno Mach doesn't kill me. Um, or if Monferno is weak enough to Sucker so that Sucker kills that. Uh, Huntail definitely has sweeping chances here. It's an incredibly clutch Mon once you, once you use it. I've, I've pulled back some crazy games just with Huntail. So... Leading off, I'm fairly certain he's going to have Smeargle, and I want to lead with Zeb Strika, hopefully make him think I might be Sap Zipper, so he might not click Spore if he has it, but I'm really just going to Volt Switch directly out. Uh, I'm not Sap Zipper, I'm Lightning Rod, I'm going right into Leafeon, but he actually clicks Rocks, and at this point, I don't know if he has Webs or not. If he did, I assume he would have gone for them, because Webs just do more work than rocks. Rocks break golem sturdy, and then they have a little bit of chip, but they're not that needed, so I assume he just never ended up having webs. It wasn't webs hyper offense, or he just didn't click it, but I really think that would have been the play for him if he did. Regardless, uh, I am just able to click the knockoff and remove Smeargle. That was something I was terrified of from Team Preview, just so removing that is huge. He's going to go into Monferno, which I knew was going to happen, but I had to revenge this miracle with something. And I can go right to Grumpig, because he has two solid checks in Missy and then Cacturn annoys it from clicking Psychic. He actually pulls the double right into Mischievous, and I can go Golem. And one thing I didn't say from Team Brave View is if you look at his team, uh, Zebstrika has the potential to be HP Grass or Water, so if my Sturdy is broken, that kills me. And then he has a Water type, a Fighting type. A grass type and a bulky mon with a, an immunity to earthquake that often carries will o wisp 
Golem does absolutely nothing. So the fact that he predicted me called out my Grumpig, that's fine, because Golem is always death fodder that I have. It's basically, it, that's about as useful as it is. So uh, I'm going to predict him to taunt, or at least scout for it a little bit by just clicking Stone Edge. And I do get off a good amount of damage on Mr. Miss. Uh, it's likely in range of Shadow Ball. Depends on his set, but it's probably in range of Grumpig Shadow Ball. And uh, I'm just going to chip it a little more. Hopefully he's not Taunt, Wisp, and Pain Split, but that's not really that common. Uh, as I'm just sitting here clicking Stone Edges. I actually hit all three, catch the Floatzel and crit it. Uh, this isn't huge. Floatzel didn't. It Floatzel doesn't live hits. Um, I get off the sucker. I guess it actually is in range of Monferno Mock Punch, so that could have been a little annoying for him, but I'm not going Monferno versus a Life Orb Physical Floatzel. Or at least it has Waterfall. I'm actually going to go right to Huntail, because Huntail also, I did say it puts in work, but the thing is, uh, looking at the game at this point, I have no way to weaken the Cacturn into Sucker Range. And I have nothing that I can set up on that'll keep me out of Monferno Mock Punch range. So Huntail Sweeping isn't really going to happen. In the meantime, I need something to range Floatzel. I don't want it to be Leafeon because that gives him free Monferno. So I'm like, might as well set up with Huntail. Get off a good amount of damage. Force him to chip something else. Just keep the offensive pressure, offensive momentum. So I'm going to smash. He actually has HP Electric, uh, which is making a comeback for Pelipper, obviously. Um, but that's fine, I still have 25%. He can go Monferno now. All I can do is get off the sucker damage, which is still a good 48%. <laughs> like, damn, that's a violate Monferno. Um, he can take me out with the Mock Punch. Totally fine. As I bring Grumbig in, I really didn't think he would risk Cacturn. I didn't think that he would want to make that kind of play, but he actually went right into it, really caught me off guard, I have to fodder something, I am Colbert Grumpig, but I am in Sucker Punch range, er, not fodder, I have Monferno, excuse me, that's later, so I go Monferno, he's going to double the Mischievous, and at this point nothing can take the Shadow Ball, and I let Monferno get weakened. In hindsight, I don't know if this was the play. My point, my idea was, nothing can take the Shadow Ball, at least Monferno like won't almost be dead. I can't really go to Zeb Striker or Leafeon reliably. In hindsight, if I remove Mischievous, Monferno really does uh, almost clean up. Um, it can take a hit from Zeb Striker. Obviously, I need it for Cacturn. Uh, his Monferno can't kill me from full, and it's uh, in, the, in the range of 90 CC. But uh, with that double, uh, he's going to really catch my Monferno to weaken it. So after Shadow Ball and Flare Blitz. Uh, I can't really reliably save this anymore, and I'm certainly in range of Cacturn and Sucker Punch, so he's going to go to Zeb Strika. I don't want my Monferno dead yet, because he still has a Cacturn, so I'm going to go to my own Zeb Strika. If he overheated, that could have been dangerous. I didn't think he'd want to. And at this point, uh, if he won the speed tie, it would have been a little difficult for me, but um, I could still go right to Grump Egg, and I ended up winning the speed tie myself, which is great. I can just let Zeb Strike die here, I don't need it, and here's where things get interesting. I'm gonna go to my own Monferno. In hindsight, I made the right play, but at the time, I was really mad at myself, because I figure Mock Punch is just the easiest, safest play, but what's gonna end up happening is, he goes right into Monferno, obviously. He needs to pivot in on the Mock Punch and then win a speed tie. Um, I try to win a speed tie and I don't, and now that Cacturn is a lot more threatening. Now that Cacturn is going to give me problems, and I make another terrible play by going to Leafeon. Now here's the thing, if I just click Monferno Mock Punch, that's still fine as long as in this situation I go Grumpig. If I go Grumpig and I click Focus Blast, as long as I do not miss, that is a win for me. That is a guaranteed I win because this is Scarf Leafeon with X Scissor in the final slot. So if he goes Cacturn, he, he dies. And if he decides to stay in and I hit, he's dead. Leafeon, no matter what, is going to be revenging the Cacturn. What I do instead is I don't calc and I assume Double Edge Leafeon is the safest play that I could possibly make. What I'm going to learn afterwards, though, is that his Monferno Mock Punch plus my Recoil doesn't quite put me in range of Cacturn Sucker. I got that correct, as long as he's specially biased. If he was physically biased, this was a huge choke. He doesn't even click Sucker, 
but Double Edge doesn't kill. So I know I'm throwing out a lot of information, but basically I choked the hell out of that game. He's able to just click Drain Punch, keep himself out of killing himself with Life Orb, and um, now Grumpig dies to Sucker Punch. Major, major choke. Um, all I had to do was go Grumpig, click Focus Blast, but instead I went Leafeon, assuming Double Edge would either kill Cacturn or put it in range of killing himself with Sucker Punch. It wouldn't have done either, and he is Drain Punch to keep himself healthy, so what, what can I do? I can win Taunt versus Sucker Punch 50-50s, and I'll just let this one play out because there's really nothing else I can do. <sighs> taunt, Sucker, Taunt, Sucker, and... What's going to end up happening is, after all these major chokes, at least the one with uh, not clicking, not clicking Grumpig and going Focus Blast, and then not close combating, predicting his Monferno. Pretty badly played on my part. I'm not proud of how I did this. But what I am going to do is I'm going to successfully stall him out, out of all eight Sucker Punches and take him out with the Shadow Ball. I can't be happy about that, but nevertheless, incredibly close game. Really just came down to the last Mon situation, and holy shit, I won the first game. That's really good for the rest of the best of three. Okay, so getting into game two finally, after that questionable end of the commentary where I was just too excited about that game. Um, I decided let's bring more of just that straight up standard balance. I got the Muck Probe Pass Core, which is absolutely everywhere right now because Curse Muck's really fucking good. Probe Pass removes, steals that wallet, have some stuff to handle ground types, boom, you're good. Uh, he brings a notable meme team, which is just dual weather shenanigans. And it's notable just because it can kind of just fuck you up in some matchups. If you're not prepared for Sand, and if you're not prepared for Subcom Line Grumpig. Um, I go into this game thinking, yeah, I'm pretty fine against them. It's a meme team. He probably just ran out of teams or something. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm, feel, I'm feeling okay. Didn't think about the team preview too much. Uh, all I can, all I know is that Band Mime plus, here, Band Stalin plus Specs Mime, excuse me, is gonna just start spamming the shit out of his team in that Snover Hippopotas Luminion defensive core, because that's a thing. Uh, so I lead Mr. Mime, he leads Luminion like boom, Specs Gleam, just turn one, let's let's start clicking it. He goes Snover and that does zero, <laughs> that did nothing. I thought he had no switch-ins for Mime, and I'm going to make what's a pretty terrible play there. I could have just kept up the pressure by Gleaming again, just start weakening it, weakening it now, no harm no foul, but instead I go right to Stoutland, I'm like... I don't know, I wasn't doing that much. And then I try to double back to Mime, for whatever reason. Um, I, I'm i not even playing at all. I'm like, okay, let me try to trick it or something. No, he protects again just to stall it out, scout my move. I'm like, fuck. Well, he won't want Snover to get tricked, right? No, he actually stays in letting it get tricked. So I have just been completely played by this goddamn Snover. I'm gonna go back into Muck now, because Muck can take it on as he reveals he's a uh, Protect Leech Seed Toxic Blizzard, just the whole set. Now I'm gonna double back into Mr. Mime, because I know I have a Muck in, he's going Hippo, I can catch that, I can click Gleam, we good here. Um, he's gonna get directly out back into that Snover, and uh, because I let him get the Leech Seed health, I'm not to it KOing. I need to, I need to weaken this, so finally I realize, hey, you know what the good play would be to click Gleam. Uh, so I'm going to Gleam as he Leech Seeds. Uh, I honestly thought he would double seed here, which is why I stayed in, but he ends up just protecting. And uh, now Mime is like, yes, I can finally get a kill. He has no switch-ins to Specs Mime. Until he actually goes Hippo, which normally can't switch in, but because of the Leech Seed, it is going to be able to take that and then get enough health back. So my Mime, which had he had no switch-ins to, almost dead. His Snover, his Hippo, still alive. What am I doing again? Like, hello? I I'm playing terribly, so I'm gonna get the Print Plup in. I'm like, okay, I can double the Stalland on the Luminion, get off a good, solid amount of damage, uh, keep breaking him, keep up the pressure. This game is absolutely not over, regardless of how badly I've been playing. 
uh, click frustration, you can U turn out, that's fine. The Minion is very close to dead now, not taking hit from Mime, not taking hit from Stout. Uh, he brings in his own Stoutland. I go Muck, expecting a superpower, but at the same time, if I'm wrong, Curse Muck is going to be beaten by. Uh, both his Hippopotas and his Grumpig, so not a huge deal if I lose it. And here I honestly thought, because I know he's banned, he would predict my Probo Pass, but nope, he just stays in. Uh, so I'm going to bring in my Probo Pass, finally get up Rocks. Uh, he stays in, just because breaking my Balloon means that this Probo Pass doesn't wall his Hippopotas, uh, otherwise it wouldn't be able to touch me, but now that it's broken, he can go into his Hippo. And uh, not take too much at all from a Flash Cannon, like 30% totally fine. Um, my print club comes in, and this is where it gets a little interesting. Uh, he wants rocks removed. Rocks being removed would be huge for him. For one thing, he'd still have Snowbird. But I'm actually Signal Beam, just to hit Cacturn on the switch in, and that's gonna barely knock him into range of the sand, which goes before Leftovers, which is fucking huge. So that's down, and here's where the game goes out of control. You see, this Printplup somehow in the team builder. It was supposed to be Scald, Defog, Signal Beam, and Yawn. Very basic set, that's what I like to run on Printplups. Somehow, I couldn't tell you how, Yawn got replaced with HB Fire, and I went into the game thinking, okay, I mean, that's not gonna be huge, right? Like, hell, it might even hit Snover when he can't. he's expecting it to wall Printplup. It could be kind of funny. Unfortunately, what happens is the Grumpig's gonna come in, click Calm Mind, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can Skull Burn since I don't have Yawn. No, I don't do that. And um, he's gonna be able to set up the sub with the Calm Mind, and this is just, uh-oh. What do I have to take this on? Signal Beam's not doing shit. I mean, I'm an un uninvested Printplup, what do you expect? Weather's gone, so he's gonna start actually getting the leftovers recovery, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to break the Grump Pig sub and go directly into my Mr. Mime, because I know Mr. Mime can break his substitute, and once I break his substitute, I can bring in the Jolly Choice Band in Stoutland, and I can actually revenge the Grump Pig. What's actually gonna happen here is that this whole game I thought my Stoutland was jolly, and you know what? It's not jolly Stoutland. It's adamant Stoutland. It's slower than the Grumpig. I was caught completely unaware. I played the whole game assuming I was jolly, assuming I had a way to be Grumpig, and the whole time I didn't. If I had known, I would have just been like, I can't let this come in and set up at any point in the game at all, but... Uh, I cannot handle this Grumpig, and that's just gonna take a game which, ostensibly, I was doing pretty damn well, and I could have definitely won that game. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna lose to the Grumpig. Oops. Oopsie. Um, very, very unfortunate. I end up losing- this meme team is like 2-1 and one in the open or something right now. Uh, I, I just <laughs> lost to the subcom on Grumpig. Turns out, anyway, it's actually, um... Max speed timid grumpig. So even if my Stoutland had been jolly, it still would have come down to a speed tie. Uh, max speed timid just isn't that common of a grumpig set, but he has it. It speed ties with Stoutland. And yeah, really unfortunate way to end this. I I was feeling pretty good, you know, pretty confident after coming off that last one, winning all eight sucker pool. Only like six sucker punch mind games because he used one on Zeb Striker one on Leafeon, but you know what I mean. So, this last game, I bring another variation of my Huntail offense. You can see it, all, it also has Huntail plus Swords Dance Monferno plus Zeb Striker. Uh, but this one's actually a Sand team. And we had taken a little break before this because he's like, I need to steal a team from someone. Like, Ugh, you kidding me? He didn't even have three teams? Fine. So, he actually gets some good shit from someone. I still don't know who. I assume it might have been like Hond or Galbia, because uh, they're all Italians, or I don't know, Teddy was online, Dundee's, I don't think he was online, could have been anyone really, I don't know, but this is pretty scary. Once again, he has the goddamn Cacturn, check my Huntail, um, and really, obviously, Cacturn, no switchings other than Monferno, Monferno can get weakened, that's annoying. Huntail, can't break through Printplup. Needs Cacturn weakened, but otherwise this is Ice Beam. This is not Frustration, 
and with that killing Gorgeist, I could very easily take the game quite early, as long as I can weaken the Cactor and weaken the Print Plop. And you know what can do that? Stoutland can weaken Print Plops. As long as I get rid of the Gorgeist, what gets rid of the Gorgeist? Monferno. What's Monferno, wa Monferno walled by? Print Plop. Oh, I also have to use it to check Cactor. And you can see, this team preview, like, this game is not going to be any sort of simple plan, because uh, sometimes life doesn't work that way. I went in, I looked at it, and I was pretty discouraged by Team Preview, just because I don't have the most solid way to break through his team. He also has AV Muck, which can wall the Zebstrika. Um, I don't have great Stoutland switch-ins. A Hippopotas can switch into Bandit Stoutland, but only if it's at full health. And even then, I have to spam Slack off. That's all I can do to it. Um, my own Sand Stoutland not going to be doing too much. I mean, I can crunch Gorgeist on the Switch, but he has Gorgeist, he has Printplup. You don't really have better checks to, stand, to Sand Stoutland in the meta. Plus, Cacturn revenges it once it hits like 60 or 70 with a Sucker Punch. So, I'm pretty discouraged from Team Preview. I'm just putting you in my mindset, but I still have chances. You, you almost always have chances. That's just a fact. So, I'm going to lead Zebstrika, trying to catch the Printplot very early on, as he's going to lead Stoutland, and I'm like, okay, not what I expected, but I can just Volt right into Hippo. Seems safe, seems reasonable, get off some nice chip damage. Uh, I bought, By the way, I'm going to keep this on a slower speed, because this game is like, game three, two great teams, I want to just be looking over this, I also don't want to be pausing so much, paused a lot in the last two games, so... Hippo comes in on the frustration. He can just spam frustration if he wants, but I assume he doesn't want to try to commit to that this early, so I'm just going to click slack off as he goes print plop. As you can see, I don't really have the best water switch -ins. That might be an understatement. My water resist is life orb on tail, uh, but print plop is the defensive water that I can check, so I'm going to go right into Stoutland on the basis that if he scalds, if he burns, well, I have facade. And he had a Gorgeist anyway, like, well, what the hell is it going to do? But he doesn't burn, he doesn't opt for Stealth Rock, so that's rather nice. And I can just basically click Crunch, because he's obviously going Gorgeist. If it's Colber, I might as well get rid of that Colber now. If it's not, this is actually going to do a significant amount of damage, like it does. And he's actually pretty weakened. Um, unfortunately, he, Synthesis, he's not going to click that, because he's only getting 25% with Sand, and Stoutland is going to take a buttload from Foul Play, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to switch right into Monferno, because I can take that, and you're going to see it's only going to do like, uh, 16%. You can keep that in mind, by the way, 16%, because it'll come and play later. So, Monferno inside on the Gorgeist. I'm going to try to close combat, just predicting the Printplup get up some extra chip damage. Uh, in hindsight, a double might have been better, just because that did 28%. Jolly, if I light Monferno, everyone, it's not that strong. So, you got to get right out of there, go into Zebstrika. I don't think he's scalding, just because Stealth Rock at this point, pretty clearly going to be nice for him to wear down my team, but, you know, could have happened. Uh, I'm going to pull a double right into my Hippopotas, because I'm pretty sure the AV Muck's coming in, or maybe even his own Zebstrika. Uh, he certainly wasn't scalding, so I wasn't really afraid of that play. As uh, Muck is, the Muck does come out. Uh, I keep saying AV. I actually have no idea if it's AV, but I'm just going off of that worst case scenario. It's AV and it's walling my Zebstrika. So, he's going to double right into Cacturn as I want my own Stealth Rock, and, like, that is the price I have to pay for rocks. Every time Cacturn comes in, it's a fucking threat. So, I'm going to have to get right out of there. Uh, Monferno is the pivot. I thought he would just seed bomb. I was, I, like, honestly, because he, like, Monferno can only come into that once. And th I just thought risk free prediction. But at the same time, it's not like Hippopotas is doing anything to a character, and so might as well superpower. And Monferno is almost dead. That's my character in switching. The only thing I have for that now is Healing Wish Mr. Mime. So, right here. To make up for game one, not close combating his Monferno switch in, I am going to close combat the Printplop switch in. Otherwise, Mock Punch plus close combat wouldn't have killed, but that is going to put me in a pretty, well, in a much better position than I would have been. That prediction is going to be very useful. I doubt Mock Punch would do 15%. Um, so I'm going to take it out, 
and carefully looking at that sand counter in the upper left, sand is going to end, I still have that Monferno, and he goes mock just expecting to take me out with a shadow sneak, and I'm like, no, I have a healing wish, Mr. Mime, and, and like you can see, Monferno is my only thing for Cacturn, Cacturn is fucking broken, can we ban this shit yet? All I have is Mon Monferno, everything else is going to die, I have to preserve it, that's my only chance, that's just a fact. So, he's going to sneak the Hippopotas, not really doing shit, and if you're wondering why I click slack off when I'm at 77%, it's only because I need to be at 100% to switch into the stat one. Like 77%, it's not enough, and I don't have lefties or anything to support myself, so he's going to get in the Gorgeist, and at this point I really want to know if he's Seed Bomb or if he's uh, Leech Seed, because if he's Seed Bomb, Huntail can't set up. But if he's Leech Seed, Huntail can set up, and Huntail wins, because Cacturin is in range of Sucker Punch after switching into rocks, taking Life Orb, taking Sand, switching to rocks again when it comes in. Huntail is almost going to win, and remember that print Plop that was walling it? Yeah, it's dead, so that is my win plan right here. That's at least something. So I'm going to bring in the Zeb Strike on the, Gor on the Gorgeist, just because I am Sap Zipper, I want to see if it's Seed Bomb, but he clicks Synthesis, so I'm like, alright, well, free overheat. Muck comes in, and uh, I don't have, um, I go Hippo because I don't have the luxury of just taking more Life Orb hits. I want Zeb Strike as healthy as possible, and really, if Volt Switch isn't going to kill, I'm at minus two, why would I want to chip myself a little more with an extra 10%? But what he does here, which is pretty interesting, he actually pulls a double right into his Zeb Strike, trying to catch the Volt Switch, because then he'd get the Lightning Rod boost, and that would be a huge threat, like, I don't have anything to take that on. But because I don't click Volt Switch, I get into a really nice position right there, much better than I would have been. Uh, I'm just going to fire off an Earthquake. Doubling on the Gorgeist probably would have been the better play, but uh, at, the, at the time I was a little confused, like, why did he go Zep Strike? I don't really get it, you know? Um, so I just click Earthquake, not sure what his plan was. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, he's trying to get Lightning Rod. So I'm just going to Whirlwind him out, knowing he clicks Synthesis, and damn it, I got Cacturn, he gets a kill. What am I going to do? Like, anything other than Cacturn, totally fine with. Hippo can beat Stoutland, it can beat Muck, it can beat Zepstrika. Whoops, you got Cacturn. Uh, so I think about I think about this for a while, and then I decide my own Stoutland, probably the best fodder, dies to his Zepstrika, has to win a speed tie versus his Stoutland. Uh, not beating Gorgas, dying to Cacturn Sucker. No point in keeping it around. He actually makes a really odd play and doubles to Zepstrika. This is honestly the only thing I never got in any of our games. I just can't understand why he wouldn't seed bomb. Um, maybe I'll ask him later. Maybe he'll comment on the vid. I don't know if he subbed me. Anyway, uh, Stellan's inside. I don't really know why, but it is. Um, I'm going to go into my Hippopotas on his Zebstrika because it does end up having the capability to live two HP Ices, or an Overheat plus an HP Ice, thanks to him being at minus two. Uh, he's going to predict that and get in his Gorgeist, and I'm staying in with Hippopotas, even though I can't doing, do anything to it, just because I want to spam Slack off until he reveals whether he's Seed Bomb or Will-O-Wisp. Uh, Leech Seed, sorry, he's definitely Will-O-Wisp, but if he's Leech Seed, Huntail can set up. So he reveals Seed Bomb, finally. I'm like, damn it. That would have made things a lot easier if I could just go to Huntail and win, but of course I can't. Um, that was my thought process. I haven't calced Foul Play and how much that does to a plus two Huntail. It probably does a lot, so I'm not even sure if I'm correct about the whole setup thing, but I'm giving that to you just as like, this was my thought process. So anyway, I'm going to slack off a bit and then whirlwind him out into the muck. I did want to save Hippo at this point, but then I calc and I realize uh, Choice Fan would have to get a max damage roll. It does 38 to 45. So he would have to be Choice Banded Ice Punch and get a max roll to kill me. So I'm fine, I can just click slack off. Unfortunately, he gets that. But fortunately, this is where Huntail comes in. He's for sure locked into Ice Punch. So, I can just set up and win. Everything dies to Huntail once it's set up. All I have to do is click Cell Smash, I have the win, what is he going to do? I mean, he has to stay in Ice Punch, there's no problem, right? Until he gets the poison. 
30% chance with Poison Touch, and, you know, if I got the 30% chance to burn the Grunt Pig with Scald, I still would have won that game. But he gets that, and I'm not, I'm not salty at all. I honestly didn't see it coming. I thought I won, I thought I smashed and I won, and he actually got the Poison Touch, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I, I did a full out no, which I'm not going to do thanks to my microphone quality, but I was like, I thought I won. I thought I had it. Unfortunately, Huntail is gonna kill itself thanks to poison and life orb. Oopsie doopsies. I don't get it. So, uh, Cactron gets a kill if I go anything but Mr. Mime. That's just a fact. And he does indeed send out Cactron, which was his play. And I have to go right to Mr. Mime, click the healing wish button. Uh, no nothing else to do. He actually doesn't even want to risk playing Sucker Punch Mime games and instead goes right to Gorgeist. I don't really see why. Like, I, I have to click Healing Wish here. Uh, bring in the Monferno, and despite the Huntail stuff, and despite me losing my new my uh, uh, numbers advantage, I was trying to say like numerator. That's that's a uh, uh, fractions there. Uh, I do have the upper hand here now because the Monferno is back inside to put in some work. Uh, I'm gonna just straight up set up a Swords Dance, and it's fine. I can just Flare Blitz this. Mock Punch the Zebstrika, Mock Punch the Cacturn, and win. Uh, but this is where Cryolot pulls out something interesting. He's actually going to go right into Zebstrika, knowing that I'm going to Flare Blitz. Uh, because the recoil of this Flare Blitz, plus the next one on Gorgeist, is for sure going to take out Monferno. Like, recoil from Gorgeist alone, not going to kill my Monferno. Recoil from both of them, going to take me out. And at that point, Cacturn would just win. So I realized I can't do that. Um, that would be a surefire loss. So I'm gonna Death Fodder Stelton right here. Um, just so that I can get in my Zebstrika and click Overheat and claim a kill. Uh, I even lived the foul play on one, which is pretty interesting. I didn't expect to live. Uh, it's gonna let me crunch. He's actually gonna recover more because of that, so the roll ended up helping him overall, but it doesn't really matter. Um, he's obviously gonna click Synthesis. No reason not to. He knows I'm Life Orb. Now Zeb Striking can come in, free overheat. How is he going to play out of this one? Um, well, what he's going to do is he's going to death fodder to the Cacturn and then bring in Gorgeist on a minus two Zeb Striker. Because here's the thing, if he can spam Synthesis on my Monferno, I only have a 37.5% chance to Oko him from full HP with my Zeb Striker's overheat. Um, which is a ch obviously his best chance of winning. Like, he has no other sweeping chances. He has to try for this. So, uh, Zeb Strike is at minus two. It's not going to do enough. I have to switch out. And, uh, Monferno is at 18% after Stealth Rock. But if you remember last time, Foul Play did 16%. And I said, keep that number in your mind. Um, Foul Play is 15 to 18%. So if he Foul Played there and he killed me, Leftovers wouldn't have put him in the range to live in Overheat anyway. But Monferno can also take that. So, he's going to click Synthesis. And here's the thing, excuse me while I'm just pausing even more, and something popped up on my computer, I have no idea what that was, but I'm not gonna re-record all this this late into the session. Anyway, a Blaze Overheat does enough to the Gorgast, where it's gonna for sure die to, my, die to uh, the Overheat. Blaze Flare Blitz, I'm sorry, okay. Restarting this. A Blaze Flare Blitz from the Monferno would for sure put him in range of my Zebstrika. Now you're probably wondering, why am I even mentioning Blaze? Well, as it just so happens, another team building error, and I swear this was unintentional, the same errors that lost me game two are gonna help me out here. You see, if I'm Iron Fist, Flare Blitz doesn't do a lot. In fact, I need to get a good enough roll so that his Synthesis plus Lefties does not put him back in range of Zebstrika. Um, or does put him back in range of Zeb Striker. Like, if I Flare Blitz, I'm dying to recoil. He clicks Synthesis, gets the lefties. I need him to be weakened. Because at 100% chance, uh, at 100%, the roll is not in my favor. I also have the option to try to Sword Stance, but if I Sword Stance and he foul plays, I don't want to risk that. So, this is really going to sort of turn into a 50 50. Do I Sword Stance on the foul play? Um, do I Sword Stance on the Synthesis? hoping he doesn't click Foul Play, or do I Flare Blitz on the Foul Play, hoping he doesn't click Synthesis, or failing that, do I get a 
do I get a high enough roll with the Flare Blitz to knock him into overheat range? I apologize for screwing up uh, my commentary there, but hopefully that explains that this is this game is coming down to the wire. And anyway, the point is, I don't have to worry about all that. Team building error, I'm not Iron Fist, I'm Blaze, and Flare Blitz is just going to do so much damage, 83% kill myself that he is for sure in range of overheat and in fact he actually did click foul play trying to catch me on the sword stance um, and that's actually gonna let me click Thunderbolt with Zeb Strike so I don't even have to risk overheat missing because he's in range of T-Bolt right now um, it does 23.2 percent minimum and I was willing to risk that because the chance of me not killing is actually uh, smaller than the chance of missing overheat so despite <laughs> my shitty ass commentary at the end hugely close game close series versus Crylaw and this is just the open round two there's actually very few PU mains left it's like me and Rommel and advantage kinda that's about it Teddy got hacked Kaboom got hacked Dundee's just played bad um, we're running low on people so I'm really gonna try and push this open run as far as I can I don't know how far I can do uh, my team building right now really hasn't been on point. Uh, I'm still I'm still playing good players, not PU mains is what I was talking about, but good players nevertheless. But yeah, I'm gonna try to extend this run as long as possible. I've never had like a closer, more intense series versus Crylot. I choked game one, still won all the 50/50s with Sucker Punch. Game two, team building errors just fucked me, and also I, I was weak to Subcombine Grumpig. That was all. That was a weakness. Like the, the errors on move slots and uh, abilities, or not abilities, nature is hurt. But I was weak to it. And uh, game three, I finally just feel a lot better. Like I actually think I played this game well. No, no misclicks, no, no chokes, no team building errors. I, f I feel pretty good about this game. So great game, cry a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna keep this open run up. I'm going to try to keep bringing content despite school, despite college stuff, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.